Hi, uh, everybody. Thank you for coming today. I know that it's getting uh, somewhat late, but uh, what I want to talk about is the other targets that surround uh, the election system. Now, I know that a lot of us are concentrating on the voting machine, and certainly I have been, but there's other ways, as we've probably heard some of the other speakers mention, that uh, elections can be swayed. So what I really want from everybody to get out of this is to understand that the voting machine is very important, and we have done a lot of uh, research into it and things like that, but there's other things that we need to consider. So this is me, and um, I put this slide uh, deck together just because, you know, a lot of times with security, we think that this is done by these people in a dark room in a closet and things like that. No, you know, I mean, we are normal people. I'm a private pilot, fixed-wing drone pilot, and... Uh, love life and uh, freedom and, and everything else. So uh, this is normal people doing normal things that are finding uh, just how easy it is to uh, get vulnerabilities and to compromise our election systems. So I'm from the purple state of Florida, and I promise I did not plan this out. And if you guys have seen Harry going around the voting village, he's wearing a purple shirt. So somehow we must get the memo. Um, so Florida is... Uh, always in the news about something, whether it's alligators or if it's the recount of 2000, uh, the gu gubernatorial race of 2018, and uh, of course it was the scene for uh, Hacking Democracy where Harry and uh, Bev and Dr. Hugh Thompson did a lot of filming in Florida, and uh, it just so happens that I'm from Florida also. So the voting machine, I knew I couldn't get out of here without at least talking a little bit about the voting machine. Uh, this is the one that we've uh, simulated the whole election system. And you'll see as I talk about the various components of this is that the first one that I looked at was in 2016 in preparation for DEF CON. And it was so riddled with vulnerabilities and things like that that um, you know, we decided that, hey, you know what, let's just make our own with all the other uh, components of it. And that way we can talk about the security aspects because it wouldn't be that much fun if I brought the real voting machine uh, to... Um, to Black Hat back in 2016. But something that I find as I looked into this voting machine and along with the other components of the modern day election system is that a lot of the basics aren't even being done. And I, I know we've heard that quite a bit. Uh, some of these, and I use the air quotes, hard drives, are just regular compact flash cards. And if you guys go over to the voting village, you'll see some of those compact flash cards. Uh, some of these air quote hard drives, they uh, maybe they wanted to make them a little more secure by uh, embedding the hard drive onto the board itself. And they used a, a, process, a type of chip called a BGA or ball graph array. This is nothing more than a memory chip that's soldered to the board. So a little manipulation and we're back to square one. Uh, this is something that's really important. As you see uh, these machines, whether regardless of the operating system, I've looked at two, two separate ones and both of them were different uh, operating systems, but it's, it wasn't even the basics weren't, weren't utilized. So there's no encryption, uh, full disk encryption and those kind of things. And even our phones have those on them now. And most laptops, I mean, if you have an Apple product, you click File Vault and it's done. And um, so there's, you know, tons of things that aren't even being met by basic security. So just a slight disclaimer, because I know I always find one person in the crowd that says, you know, debunks, you know, things that, that we try to say. But these are just the machines I looked at, two of them uh, from two separate manufacturers. And the last one was used in the last election, and the other one was used in the 2016 election. So anything I talk about throughout this presentation is just the uh, hardware that I've had the utmost privilege of uh, exploiting. So uh, the memory cartridge is, whether it's made by Sequoia or any of the other vendors, there's some kind of medium that flows back and forth. And so one thing that I hear a lot of is these machines are not connected to the Internet. And most the ones I've seen, they, they do not have a direct Internet connection. But if you take and put a memory card or anything inside of a machine that doesn't have Internet connectivity... Then you put it in a machine that does have internet connectivity. And then you put it back into the other machine where you have internet co connectivity. You just have really, really long ping times and latency and stuff like that. A lot of us in the uh, business call it the sneaker net, right? So you, you don't have an ethernet. You have a sneaker net between them. And so these uh, voting cartridges are perfect for reading and writing stuff too. Moreover, uh, since they're not encrypted at rest, Whenever I received the voting cartridges, it was pretty simple. Uh, this 
form factor here, while it, you know, some of us that have been around for a little while understand that that's a PCM CIA or laptop um, card. And so for a couple bucks on the internet, you could buy one of these things and, and they're very outdated and you plug it in. And the ones that I bought actually had the election system uh, ballots still on there. Now, I couldn't see who voted for who, but I could see who had uh, points in different areas and the tally and stuff like that. But what this gave me was a glimpse into how these machines work. And because that uh, was available on one of the major online auction sites, uh, I was able to grab this, no full disk encryption. So this is a very high value target that I acquired as a good guy, but it allowed me to make my own ballot, which was um, pretty cool. And the machine accepted it and did its integrity checking and all that fancy stuff and seemed to load it up. So that was pretty cool. So, you know, as we move forward with these, and I know that a lot of people talk about these not being connected to the internet, just rest assured that unless you're using things like write blockers and all kinds of stuff, uh, really this is, to me, is one of the highest value targets because this is used to not only load the, ba the, the ballots, but it's also used to write the information then to the cartridges that are uh, transferred. So you can do things like stuff in the ballot box virtually and things like that. Um, this is something I've been focusing on quite a bit lately, is um, this piece of the election infrastructure is what myself and my friends and everybody else hopefully stays up late at night on election night to see that real-time dissemination of voting, right? It's almost like the Super Bowl. It's like, yes, this state's reporting and this much stuff. Well, this dissemination uh, system is something to me that's of greatest concern because there's not a standard protocol and procedures for how does this information get disseminated. And so, as one of the other speakers were talking about, some people use Twitter and stuff, but um, in general, what I found is, is that there's not so much a nationwide central repository. Um, most of this stuff is stored out on cloud servers, uh, whether it's, you know, name your, your major um, provider. But whenever I was looking into this, into these buckets and shared drives, uh, currently, as of three days ago, because I wanted to make sure that my talk was current, that this is still a, a, a factor in one of the states that uh, is storing the same data from the election results, the unofficial results, in the same bucket of data or share drive, whatever you guys want to call it, as the division of corporations records. And so now we know as security professionals, right? I mean, let's get least privileged access. And now something I wonder is, is that if they didn't take the uh, little bit of forethought to say, you know what, why don't we at least get our own bucket or our own share drive and have just this in there? Now someone could be compromised from the division of corporations at this specific state and could, could um, change this file or manipulate it. Now the news media or whoever's pulling that information so they could be the first one to call a state, that file, I mean, there's no uh, hashes and keys and MD5s and all the stuff that us look at when we download stuff. So, you know, that disinformation could hit the news media very quick. And me being from the purple state of Florida, uh, they could call the election for one candidate or the other, and that may have people staying home because they're like, oh, well, they already had it. Uh, moreover, you know, this free flow of information, I really do love it, but when you think about it, um, they're using things like exit polling data. I know that my wife was involved with one of these exit poll things, and they instructed her to download an app, and uh, she was supposed to poll these people. I'm like, wait a second, let me take a look at this application you just downloaded to your phone. So, you know, where's the security and the integrity? And we just heard not... Um, a couple days ago that one major uh, online dating app was leaking not only pictures and stuff like that, but, you know, so this information is flowing pretty quickly and we need to make sure that this is, uh, you know, there's at least some kind of standards and stuff in place that control how this data is stored, where it's stored at, and things like that. And then simply uh, with the app that I looked at on her phone, it said that if there was not any um, data for the exit poll, like maybe, you know, someone didn't want to do that, you could, you could click that, and then they would use historical analysis for that precinct area. So I just think that really, as we talk about this part of the election system, which it is a part of, this real-time dissemination of data, I mean, this needs to be looked at to make sure that someone doesn't manipulate this to uh, you know, sway the outcome of, of an election or cause some kind of uh, unrest and distrust. Uh, these smart cards, these are awesome. Um, I think I still have one on me that we actually made ourselves. 
these smart cards is what they uh, tell a lot of people. Well, you know, we, we, we use uh, security encryption and you gotta have a card. And from the best that I could tell is, is that you go up and you get one of these smart cards and then that just allows you to vote, but your information isn't stored on there. But digging in a little bit more, we've seen tons of exploits in the smart cards and I don't wanna have a show of hands because uh, I don't want to incriminate anybody, but you know, back in the day, there was a certain uh, uh, digital satellite broadcast company that had a lot of <laughs> had a lot of issues with their smart cards. Right? Rumor is it was hacked before it even went up, and so uh, smart cards are notorious for uh, vulnerabilities and stuff. But what's more interesting is is that on the output of these cards, it's simply serial commands, right? So it does some processing inside with the CPU, does all the stuff. So if in the demonstration I gave back in 2016, we were able to simulate uh, a compromise of one of these smart cards, and we were able to you know, vote multiple times and stuff like that. Uh, now, that would probably get detected because uh, you know, too many people voted for that precinct that's registered and stuff like that, but you know, when you look at this as one of the targets of the modern election system, um, there's, there's more work that needs to be done. I mean, there's all kinds of, of things into this from cloning to manipulating to glitching and all kinds of stuff. So we've talked about the communications path a little bit on, on this here. Really, this is how this information is loaded to the machines and how it goes from the machine back and in, into the uh, dissemination. But moreover, the communications path I'm talking about with this is in the peripherals of the machines. These are the, the printers that print out that all official uh, tally that says this is the, the stuff uh, that how people voted and you sign it as the poll worker and turn it in. Uh, I have one demonstration that I gave into one of the voting machines where my boss, because I kind of like him, because he you know pays my bills, uh, I made it where he won the election and when the tally came out, it was completely uh, legit and stuff to the eye of the poll worker and they needed to sign it. Well there was a compromise in the path that were, no matter how the machine voted, then I could make it print out whatever I wanted um, by looking at the candidate. So it was, it was pretty technical as far as to try to evade detection, but uh, the end result is, is that whoever was the winner, the name that I inserted would automatically be the winner of that particular one. Um, yeah, so, all together, you know, all these devices. Another thing is, is that the, uh, for Americans with Disability Act uh, type requirements, you know, these audio files that are loaded onto the machine, you know, when someone plugs into that headphone jack, uh, one, I could replace, you know, the file on the machine, but moreover, I could have uh, also audio inside of there that maybe it's, uh, maybe it's just white noise and then they have an issue with the machine or something like that, but moreover, uh, I can put in the audio file and tell it, uh, you know, left is this candidate, right is that candidate. So when you look at these paths, you know, it's not just the machine, it's everything that's connected to it, network-wise and peripherals and stuff like that. We've had demonstrations where those paths can become compromised to then put out different uh, results. Of course, uh, social media, this is uh, something that's really starting to, to play out, and also like we saw with Cambridge Analytica and things. Um, you know, a lot of people, just like the front page of the paper, no one really would read, I don't, I don't get the paper anymore, but I've heard that no one reads uh, past the fold, right? Whatever's at the top. Same thing with uh, Twitter and Facebook and stuff like that. Uh, not too many people go and do in-depth stuff. Google, you know, that's why they charge so much to be one of the top search results. So with social media, anybody can say anything they want. And um, also, too, they can profile groups of people and by seeing who your friends are and stuff like that to then feed disinformation. Websites is a real, real big one also because anybody can register any domain for anything, right? So uh, we see this a lot, like someone doesn't like a major company and it's like this company sucks.com. Well, candidates' names through domain squatting and stuff like that uh, can, can also be used by adversaries to be a target where if you want to do more research, maybe you type, type in the candidate's name, but moreover, you know, through domain squatting and stuff like that, you put something out there that's a very highly controversial subject and say they're for it or against it. You're seeing a lot of these uh, Facebook and Twitter are doing the shadow banding and those kind of stuff, and so I've gotten a couple personal invites to join our Slack channel or join our Discord channel because we can post whatever we want. And these, I think, are just highly 
uh, susceptible because uh, one, if you're sending out all these invites to Slack and Discord for these private channels, but also that is just a megaphone where people can get in there and say whatever. And so, you know, I think with a lot of the social media and, and things like that, with the, some of the censoring and banning, regardless, you know, what your views are uh, of that, you know, you're seeing these private channels that are uh, being created. And to me, those are, uh, you know, just ripe for the pickings. So the question is, we get all the time, what's going to happen? You know, in my professional um, opinion, what's likely to play out is um, there, there only takes one machine and one precinct and one county to be compromised. That's it. Um, then the other problem is, is that we don't really have the mechanism to understand whether that happened or not. Uh, in one particular machine that uh, I had the uh, luxury of playing with, I was able to put uh, devices and components in and out of that machine. And us as security folks, we're like, oh, why don't we just go to the logging data? Well, I found out that that particular machine was only logging data that the vendor actually cared about, which is, did the ballot load? Did, you know, so they don't care if you, or in this particular one, they didn't care if I put a, uh, a uh, network card in and out of the machine. They didn't care about that. You know, that was never logged. So um, the problem is, is that with hacktivists and, and things like that or other folks, all they got to do is say it. And then how do we prove it? Uh, I don't think that, you know, um, I think we're more able to see things, you know, injected with bogus data, like I said, with the media and, and things like that, where, you know, those systems become compromised. And then, you know, of course, defacing insider threat. And the reason why I put insider threat is because this is one of the, the areas that I hear all the time, and we've heard a couple other uh, speakers talk about it, is that they say that, well, you would have to have physical access to this machine. And so I roll back to my first slide. You mean, you mean the guy that's like happy-go-lucky and loves life and stuff? Um, yeah, I'm not going to go break into a, a precinct and do this. But when you read the SOPs on official government letterhead that says you should plug the machine in at night at your house, and I'm kind of, you know, ad-libbing here, so the batteries are completely charged. I mean, it only takes a few seconds in any of these attacks. So... The, the fact that, you know, the insider threat, just go, uh, you know, volunteer to be a poll worker or something like that. So saying that, you know, someone that's highly sophisticated would have to have access to it, it's not that. Just like I mentioned with the, um, with, with, uh, the satellite card days, right? I mean, you could buy the equipment where someone could just press a button and do it. So um, the insider threat to me would be the, the biggest uh, to the uh, physical machine, but the rest of it is, you know, through disinformation. So with that, uh, I'm trying to speed it up a, a little bit because I know the other one ran a little long. So if anybody has any questions, uh, I guess I could take one or two or see you at the back. Oh, right here. Right. Uh, the first thing I zeroed in on really quickly is you said they're going to get an email. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's a, to me, that would be one of the first, I'm not saying the email is not secure, but you know, when you look at that now, you know, what is, what email address is getting uh, registered or how are they send in this email and all the other uh, things around that. And then you said a, a telephone, uh, what's going to happen? Is that a cell phone perhaps? Right. Yeah. Um, because SIM jacking is not a real thing in modern times, right? So, yeah, I mean, you know, any of these systems, they can be secure. And that's what I tell everybody. Like, we have the technology to solve this, right? I mean, we have things with open uh, ledger technology, and we have. But right now, you know, I try to stay out of the political part as a professional. But we can't even decide if we're going to show our ID or not or when we go to, to the polls. So, I mean, now we're going to collect phone numbers and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I see a lot of concerns and issues with that. Oh, yes, ma'am.
Yeah, so I think there's definitely a future for blockchain, and I'm really, that's why I'm very excited that DARPA is uh, at the voting village and they're working towards an open source uh, voting system because I think the more eyes that we have on this, the better we are. Uh, I mean, ca case in point with the voting village now, I mean, we have thousands of, uh, and, you know, experts looking at that, and they're finding vulnerabilities left and right. And so when you think about it, when you open source, and the, I know there's two camps, and I've, I've, I'm in both camps with open source technology, but I think uh, for what's at stake, I think that we need as many eyes looking at the source code and things like that. So uh, blockchain is definitely one of them. And, um, you know, like I said, uh, I've been on, the, uh, on conference calls with some Congress uh, men and women and a few senators, and very quickly the conversation deteriorates, uh, not from the election uh, security, but it's states' rights and sovereignty and stuff like that. So I think anything that's uh, out there that uh, could probably solve the problem, we need to get over some of the uh, soci uh, sociological issues first before we even attempt to do that. So, Yes, sir, in the back. Sure. Yes, um, definitely. So this will be the last question because I'm getting, getting the cue from the back. Uh, I think what we're doing right now is what our best hope is in the short term is the education piece of it because before folks like Hari and, and, and team started looking at this, these were uh, essentially just devices that no one really you know, looked at. And now uh, I think education, even my mom, if she goes to vote and she sees anything wrong with that voting machine, she is going to be hyper aware. So the more we can educate and, and, and it's a very complex uh, ecosystem that has, you know, with a modern day election system. So maybe there's a senator or a person or IT professional at a county or something like that. So I think we got to do a course correction for this big ship that's, uh, that we're sailing on. So I think in the short term there is hope. Uh, like I said, I don't think that there's going to be widespread exploits into the voting machines that's going to change the outcome of the election. Just, I don't, I don't see that. But now that people are educated, I guarantee you if there's any glitches whatsoever, it's going to hit uh, the, 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 the social media outlets and TVs and stuff like that. So, Well, I appreciate everybody coming. And uh, like I said, I'll be floating around in the back if, any, if anyone has any other questions and stuff. And uh, with that, enjoy your DEF CON.